Well, hello everybody. It seems an awful long time since we've seen each other, because of course we're all at home, aren't we now? Um, and I suspect that perhaps when we do see each other, we might notice one or two differences. For example, my hair's getting rather long. I can't go to the hairdresser. Maybe yours is getting a bit long too. Or maybe when I see you again, I'll think you've grown a little bit. The two of you might have lost your baby teeth and are starting to get your grown-up teeth. But I think whatever happens, we will recognise each other when we get together again. And I hope that's not going to be too long. But I don't know about you, but while I've been at home on my own, I've wanted to keep in touch with my family and my friends. So I use my iPad, my iPhone, my laptop. And I'm so glad I've got those things. Because life would be very lonely without them. But when I send messages or when I get messages back, in amongst all the words, there's usually some pictures. Now we call these pictures emojis. I'm sure you've all seen them. There's a picture of somebody who's looking pretty sad. And this one, oh my goodness, so sad, actually crying. It tells people how you're feeling. Now, sometimes somebody might be having a bit of a think. Mm, not sure. Or maybe, like me, sometimes I do silly things and then I feel a bit silly, a bit embarrassed. So I'll show a very red-faced emoji. Now, I thought that it would be a good idea to show you how to make some emojis really quickly. Now, I'm very fortunate because here I've got a piece of yellow card but white paper will do just as well so I need something to draw around I need a pencil and I'm going to draw around very quickly perhaps I'll do three just to show you three different faces and then nice big fat pen couple of eyes and a big smile. There's my first one. A uh, couple of eyes. Uh, let's have a big sad face. There we are. So that's just two. But if you ask your mums and dads and your carers, brothers, sisters, I'm sure they'll find you lots more on their phones. So I'm very going to quickly cut one out. I won't worry about getting it too neat and tidy because time is a bit important and precious. But round we go. And you might need some help with this bit. And there we have our first emoji. And I'm simply going to get a lollipop stick. If you don't have any lollipop sticks, a piece of stiff card would be just as good. And then a little bit of self-tape. Stick it over the back. If when you pick it up, your emoji is a little bit wobbly, then uh, a little bit of extra sellotape on the back. You'll be surprised how st that stiffens it up. So there I have my smiley face emoji. But to save time, I've got some emojis ready for our story. Now, our story takes place with two men walking along the road, looking, as you can see, very, very dejected. This one, very downcast. This one, fighting up the tears. And the reason that they're sad is what they're talking about. And this one is saying, I just can't believe it. I, I just can't believe it's really true. I know, said the other one. It's terrible, isn't it? Who would have thought that that would happen? And he was such a good man. Yes, said this one. When you think of all the good things that he did, he he told such wonderful stories. He he helped people who couldn't see. He helped people who couldn't walk. And suddenly, they heard a voice. It wasn't either of them, but it was somebody else. And he said to them, Hello, what are you talking about? looking so sad and they turned to look at him and they said 
But don't you know? You must be the only person who doesn't. Haven't you just come from Jerusalem? We were in Jerusalem when something terrible has happened there. And he said, tell me about it. So they proceeded to tell him all the things that they'd said to each other about how this wonderful person called Jesus had been taken by the soldiers, had been sentenced to death and then had died on the cross. A terrible, terrible death. And they said to the stranger, Our hearts are broken. We are never going to see him again. But the stranger said to them, Don't you understand? I'm surprised that you don't understand. Didn't you read the scriptures? You're good Jews, you go to the symbol. Didn't you go to the scriptures and see what was going to happen? And he seemed really pleased. So they said to him, what do you mean? And he said, but if you were to go through your scriptures. Now, the Jewish scriptures are what we call the Old Testament. I didn't have the New Testament then, of course. But the stranger was saying, if you go to the scriptures, you will find that for years and years and years, the prophets have been telling people that one day somebody will come, somebody who will heal the sick and let the blind see and tell stories and become the saviour of the world, the Messiah. But he died, said the others. So surely he couldn't have been the Messiah. And the stranger said, Ah, but it also says in the scriptures that this person will have to suffer, will have to die on a cross before he can become glorious and be the saviour of the world. Well, by this time, it was getting very dark. And the two men said to the stranger, look, it's very dark. You can't go on a journey on your own. We live here. Why don't you come in with us, have something to eat, and we can give you somewhere to rest. And so the stranger said, thank you very much. So they all went inside. And one of the men said to his servant, please, will you get us a meal together? because uh, we're going to give this meal to our stranger. And so the servant got busy and she got bread and she got some wine and probably grapes and olives, maybe some dates, all sorts of good things. And they sat down. Now, usually the person who owned the house, the host, would be the person to start the meal off. He would start by saying grace, saying thank you to God for the food. But before he could even start this, the stranger began. Now that was unusual, but the stranger said, thank you God for this wonderful food. And then he picked up a loaf of bread and he broke it. As he did that, the two men looked at each other. We know who you are. It was, of course, Jesus. Did you guess that? I bet you did. Now, he didn't look quite like he looked when they last saw him was something glowing about him. He looked different and that's why they didn't recognise him. But as soon as he did something, they remembered, they recognised him and they realised that Jesus, who they thought had died, was actually alive again and was with them. And of course at this point, their sad faces turned to very, very big smiley faces. And they said, 
Oh, Jesus, it's so wonderful. How did it happen? But before he could give any answers, he disappeared. And the two men were left smiling, looking at each other. Couldn't believe what they'd seen. But of course, when you hear some good news, the first thing you want to do is you want to run and tell people. And so they left the table with all the food on it. It was dark, but they ran all the way back to Jerusalem because they wanted to tell their friends what they had heard and what they had seen. And they ran and ran. And when they got to where the other disciples were, they threw their arms up and said, Guess what we've seen? Our hearts are on fire. Our hearts were broken, but just to hear him, it, it made our hearts burn. It was wonderful. We wish you'd been there. Now, that's a lovely story, isn't it? It's a story that tells us that when things are really bad, they usually, quite often, end up much better than we thought they would. And what we need to do is we need to have hope. Now, while you've been sitting at home, I'm sure you've heard all about the different things. And lots and lots of people have been very ill. And unfortunately, lots of people have died. But people have been putting something in their window. Now, I don't know if you've got one in your window. I put one in my window. It's a rainbow. And the rainbow represents hope. And the hope is that before too long, the coronavirus will go. People will be well again. And when it's safe to do so, people will be allowed to go out of their houses meet their friends, meet their family, go back to all the things they like to do, like football, table tennis, whatever it is you like to do, you'll be able to go back. So this sign of hope, for me, is two things. Hope that the coronavirus will soon be over, but also in Jesus there is always hope. Well, several things there for you to try. And if you do any of them, either take some photos or perhaps ask mum or somebody to video it. And if you can bring them back to Junior Church, we really like to have a look at what you've been doing. So until I see you all again, bye-bye.